Personalized medicine is adapting the right medicine to the right patient. We have a variety of medicines for a variety of disorders, and we haven't used them as effectively as we could. Now we're be better able to characterize patients as to the molecular etiology of their disease and can better select a medicine that's appropriate for them. Personalized medicine has evolved in several areas, but it's uh, well developed in areas such as lung cancer. Uh, lung cancer was previously des described, originally described as a disease affecting minors uh, back in the 14th century. That didn't evolve much until the chest x-ray was invented. Now we know the molecular basis of lung cancer um, and we can describe it with some precision. We know the genetic alterations that take place within the tumor that allows the tumor to grow, invade other tissue. And that genetic alteration varies from person to person. There aren't an infinite number of variation. There are a few basic themes. We, have now, we now know that the EGFR receptor and mutations of it are an important driver of some cancers. In other lung cancers, we know that overexpression of ALK, an enzyme uh, active in certain lung cancers, is pivotal for the formation of that cancer, and inhibiting it has a very beneficial effect. We now know even that some patients will become resistant to these targeted therapies, and we know the basis of the resistance. So now we'll, we'll be able to develop drugs that follow the first generation personalized medicine. So if that drug stops working, then we'll have another drug available to them. So lung cancer has gone from being a relatively amorphous condition to something that's very well molecularly defined. There's still some room for improvement, however. Other disorders, such as diabetes, which we've known for many, many years is very heterogeneous, has yet to be dissected into the root causes to the extent that we have, for example, in lung cancer. And so there's a tremendous opportunity for us to invest in research to better understand the basis for diabetes and how that varies from patient to patient. For many companies, personalized medicine is now the cornerstone of drug discovery and development. As we've characterized the diseases better, we find new drug targets, which will deliver larger effects if we can alter the target in patients with those disorders. So this has allowed for the more rapid discovery of new drug entities and more rapid clinical development of drugs for very narrowly defined patient populations. So while this effectively shrinks the market size, it delivers much greater value for those patients who receive the medicine because the medicine is very specific to their molecular basis of their disease. Personalized medicine is based on fundamental scientific discoveries. Without these, there, are, there will be no improvements in our understanding of disease. So first and foremost, we need to continue to fund basic research on the biologic basis of disease. For patients who have a disorder for which there is a molecularly defined therapy, a new drug that is going to have a very large impact on their disease, they need to have access to the appropriate tests. And there are two major barriers to this. First is physician education, so that physicians are aware that there are specialized populations that need a special test to identify them, and there is a good therapy for this subgroup. That's number one. And secondly, we need to pay for the testing. Testing is very much underappreciated and under-reimbursed. The drug will not have any benefit if it's not used, and you won't know to use the drug if you haven't performed the correct test. We need to fund research in diagnostic testing, and we need to reimburse for diagnostic tests.